What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I have a little repot with me. We're going to repot some plants that I picked up on my vacation in New York and I'm going to show you some clips from that and talk about it and we're also, I don't know, we might chat about some other things. We'll see how it goes. So I'm joining you today from my office floor. I just cleaned it out today. All of my seedlings are outside for the garden. They're not coming back in. We're done with the below 50 nights. So I'm really excited to have the office kind of, you know, a little bit less cluttered with seedlings now. So I can get back to working on houseplants because my houseplants, as usual, when you have a large collection, it's pretty much a constant state that your plants are in need of some attention. So I have a lot of plants that need some repotting and some leaf cleaning and all kinds of stuff. So today's kind of the start of that. So if you're here for houseplant content and not gardening content, you're in luck because mama been neglecting her plants. <laughs> so I've got my little uh, dollar store dish bin full of ocean forest uh, potting mix. That is my favorite houseplant potting mix. Um, that I can just get wherever. Um, I usually get it at the store that my partner Mike works at. Um, so it's very convenient, we shall say, but you should be able to find it. I, I really like Ocean Forest. A lot of people use Happy Frog, um, and I like that one too. I just find it a little bit more dense than this one, and this one I feel like um, it doesn't compact as easy, and it's a little bit more airy, which is good for like aeroids and stuff like that, which we all love, right? <laughs> So, uh, first of all, I, well, let me tell you what happened in New York. So Mike and I went away, finally, we have not gone anywhere, obviously, since the pandemic. And for a year before that, it was just a rough year in my life in general. So we ended up not being able to go on our usual trip. So we ended up going finally to our favorite place, which is New York. And we usually stay in one of the boroughs of New York City. So we'll be in Queens or uh, Brooklyn. We've stayed in Manhattan, um, not our favorite place to stay, but we had fun. So this time we stayed in Flushing and we mainly go to New York to eat. I mean, you just, if you've ever been to New York City, you know, you can get any kind of food from all over the world. Just, you know, delicious, amazing food for usually pretty inexpensive, depending on where you go. Um, we tend to go to less fancy places so we can eat a lot of food for less money. <laughs> so we spent most of the time uh, hitting all of our favorite food spots. We did go to a reggae dub show that uh, Mike's friends were putting together. So we went and checked that out. Um, we realized once again that we are not as young as we used to be and did not make it through the whole thing, but we did have a good time while we were there. And uh, we also uh, made some time to meet somebody you might be familiar with, especially since she's been on my channel before. We uh, met up with Pamela P. Oh, look who I found. <laughs> It's the other thing. Yeah, we were gonna yeah. collab and then we were just like, oh, let's just do it in person. In so person. I just drove here. I just, that was. Which was awesome. I had such a good time with her. Like we've um, done video calls together. We've collaborated on videos and everything. We've never met in person. I've actually, besides Summer Rain Oaks at one of her book events, I've never actually met another YouTuber in person. So when I get to watch, you know, everybody else having meetups and stuff with their friends, I'm always so jealous because I'm over here, like in Massachusetts, there's not a lot of us over here. So at least not from my, uh, graduating class, if you will, of plant tubes. <laughs> I finally got to meet somebody and I'm so glad that it was Pamela. She took us around Brooklyn and we went out and had some delicious food and drinks and we got to know each other a little bit better and talked and it was just really fun. I got to introduce her to Mike and stuff. So of course she took me plant shopping. Now I've never been plant shopping in New York City, so I was really excited. The first place that we went was called Greenery Unlimited and it was beautiful. I mean, like this was such an Instagrammable place, you know, like this is just a place that you know that whoever set it up was like, we want lots of pictures of this place on social media. It was gorgeous. And they had all these beautiful specimens of plants. Everything was just very, upscale looking, but it was actually really affordable too. Like it wasn't the cheapest plant place I've ever been, but you wouldn't expect that from a place like this in Brooklyn. Um, but it was really affordable. It's much more affordable than I thought. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the plant that I got, which I'm gonna cut footage in now because I don't wanna bring it in here. Ghost. Um, I'm gonna cut 
footage in here now because I don't want to bring it in this room full of all of my beloved plants. Um, but it came with free mealybugs, which um, I really wish I saw before I brought that home because there hasn't been a mealing bug in this house in probably two years and I'm pretty bummed that they've now been reintroduced to my environment um, and I didn't catch it until a couple days after I got the plant home so that sucked <laughs> so I wasn't too psyched about that but we had a good time you know wandering around the store now the second place we went I loved this was my favorite spot out of the two for sure it's called Tend, I believe, but it was a really cute little like alleyway kind of store that just had so many great plants packed into it. Like if, if you can think of a plant that's not, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, like it's in here. Like she had all this stuff crammed in the store. It was so great. Um, and I ended up picking up a couple of plants that aren't, you know, that a lot of people have, but I've just never gotten my hands on. I've just never seen them in person. Um, and I haven't been like ordering plants in the mail for a while. So it was just nice to be able to walk around a store and plant shop. I mean, I literally haven't done that except maybe peeking at the plants at Home Depot, you know, <laughs> in years. So I, we just had such a great time. And of course I spent too much money, but um, I ended up coming home with three plants. So we got the string of turtles that you saw um, a minute ago from Greenery Unlimited. And then these plants that I picked up from Tend. So I've had these plants for a couple weeks now. And so far I have not seen any pests on them. So it seems like these didn't come with any free friends, which is great. Um, this plant, did, this pot did not come from there. I got this at another nursery, but here you go. So this was the uh, first one that grabbed my eye. Pamela actually saw these first and uh, pointed them out to me. And I've never had a Syndapsis pictus jade satin before. And the leaves are just, they're just really cool. They're kind of hard, hard to explain if you've never touched one before, but um, if you have, you know what I mean potting mix that it's in looks pretty good. So I'm not really going to disrupt that very much. Um, we've got some new growth coming in. I don't want to piss that off. So I'm just going to um, add some soil into this fun little pot here. I got this at um, Peckham's, I believe, in Rhode Island. Um, I love that place. <laughs> We're gonna have to go there soon. Oh my God, Dora. I'm gonna stick that in here and uh, just give it a little bit more room to grow in a more permanent home. And then the other plant that I picked up, and I also got a pot for this one, which I'll show you. Right here is this beautiful Hoya obovada. Look at that. She is beauty. She is grace. She is style. And I forget the rest of this. Okay, so, oh. I mean, she's just gorgeous. Like, what a nice specimen. And it's got some new growth happening up here. Just looks like a really happy plant. And again, it's in some nice soil. I can see there's some slow release fertilizer in there. Love to see it. Um, so I know I don't have to do a whole lot with this one. I just want to put it into its permanent home, which is this rather lovely little pot set, which was, this cost about $13. And um, the sticker on the shelf said that they were made in Brooklyn. Just a nice little pot set here. So now I have like, this was kind of my New York souvenirs and I really wanted to go plant shopping the last time we went to New York years back, but um, we just didn't get around to it. So this, this felt very satisfying. So now I just need to go to a used bookstore in New York um, and then all my New York City dreams will have come true. Okay, so let's get these repotted. So I'm gonna do the syndapsis first. Okay, so let's fill this bad boy up. This used to have my um, Ruby Cascade Peperomia that was like one of my flex plants for the longest time because it was so happy and so long and so beautiful. And it was like, it was like it heard me bragging about it and then it just fucking died. <laughs> so when I repot, I usually just, you know, fill the pot up to, you know, about, yeah, about there or so just to get a nice little foundation in there. And I lightly 
tamp it down so that it doesn't flow directly out of the hole when I water, but also isn't too compact or anything. Hi, Jackie. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. Actually, I had to have my daughter come and watch the house while we went to New York because my quarantine cat is so traumatized by any human that doesn't live here or didn't live here when he came here um, that he will hide. And uh, this um, well-fed animal back here will eat all of the food while he's hiding and um, he would have starved to death while we were gone. So I had to get a former house member specifically to come and take care of the cats while we were gone. And uh, to my daughter's um, displeasure, she also had to water some of my seedlings, but she did a great job. So it was nice to be in New York and not worry about the cats, frankly, or the seedlings. So of course, I haven't really done a lot of houseplant content in a while, right? It's been a little while. It, it, not a lot of it happens on this channel anymore. and. Um, part of that was just some some general like houseplant troubles. You know, my I did make a few videos about my pest struggle when the thrips kind of moved in at a point in time where I was very unmotivated and overwhelmed by life as well as my plant collection. And I did a video called um, I don't want any more house plants, I believe was the title or, or that was what the thumbnail said. And that video did really well. And I think it was because a lot of people were sort of hitting the same point as me, either because they just purchased too many house plants to keep up with, or they were sort of burning out on their hyperfixation on the house plants, which, you know, it happens. But I don't think I'm one of those people that you know, gets over my hyper fixations. I just sort of cycle through them. I've kind of, I have tried on hobbies here and there that I've let go. Um, you know, I used to, I used to dance and I can't really do that anymore. My knees and my ankles are really bad. And I just, you know, um, the, the stress of like rehearse, always making rehearsals and being on time and like remembering choreography was really difficult for me. So I just ended up getting kind of burned out on that. Um, so that's kind of a hobby I put aside, but it doesn't mean I'll never do it again. Um, I still knit. I've been knitting for 20 years and that sometimes I don't knit for three years and then other times I can't stop knitting. I'm knitting a sweater right now for summer, I guess. But when it came to the house plants, I definitely for a little while burned out on that uh, voracious like information gathering that a lot of us nerdy people do when we get fixated on something. And <laughs> I, I burned out a little bit on it, I, I, won't, I won't lie, but I never stopped taking care of my plants entirely, but I did slack on them to the point where they started to suffer and then that's when the thrips moved in because my plants were already a little dehydrated all the time, you know, a little under humidified because I got tired of changing the humidifier water and stuff like that. Um, I hadn't set up my lights on timers and, and just, you know, overall ADD proofed my, my plant care. Uh, I hadn't done that yet. And my plants just looked really shitty for a long time. And, you know, as much as you want to keep it real as a, as a creator and stuff, and you don't want to like hide your bad plant days from the audience, um, I just was really unmotivated to make any content about it because it just facing the problem, you know, just bummed me out a lot. So for a while, houseplants were not a frequent video topic here. So I appreciate those of you who stuck around, even though you're not gardeners. Um, somebody came in to see my partner at the store to get houseplant material. I'm sorry to put you on blast. I don't know your name or anything, but uh, somebody that knows of my channel came into his store and, and she said, oh yeah, I, I, do, I do still watch, you know, I do still subscribe to her even though she doesn't do houseplant videos anymore. And I was like, oh no. So you inspired me to get off my butt and do this video first instead of the other video I was gonna do about the garden, so. I don't know why I, I, I keep doing this, I'm sorry. Okay, so we've got the syndapsis in her little home here. Let's see if we can, oh, there's my focus. Very cute. So hopefully that will, you know, spill down eventually and look like hair, like, you know, these pots are kind of meant to do. But yeah, so I've been like really trying to um, reacquaint myself with my house plants and I have been taking much better care of them. I've been watering them more regularly. I've been 
trying to get back into that morning plant walk where you walk around and you look at your plants because for a little while I kind of got replaced by the garden but now I'm trying to do both like I have two gardens so I have to look at them both in the morning now that I've gotten a little bit more on top of the pests it's less depressing to do this uh, but I do need to unleash some more thrip predators very soon I saw a couple the other day so we're not out of the woods yet probably never will be honestly um, but through a combination of systemic and um, predatory insects, I do intend <laughs> to eradicate these little fuckers from my life. So I do plan to um, make use of multiple angles of pest prevention. So before I let all of the uh, next round of predators go, I'm gonna try to do some like manual leaf cleaning neem oil, stuff like that, just to try to knock down whatever's crawling around on the plants right now. Because um, I haven't seen any predatories for a while. There's probably still some around, but at this point they will have started to die down. So now is kind of a safe time to do other treatments on, at least on some of my favorite plants and like the dustier ones. Um, you don't want to really like wipe your plants when you might have little helper bugs on it. So I want to get the dust off all my plants and really baby them and then unleash another round of the thrip predators and man i'll tell you if plants there's a little rattlesnake calathea right next to me and uh that bitch is going outside pretty soon because i'm done with the thrips okay so uh let's uh repot this this chunky boy right here i let these get a bit too dry Oopsie. This has been like a very active um, garden week, so uh, my plants probably could use uh, some water today. Probably I'll have to do that today. Ooh, look at these roots. Look at those beautiful, well-rooted cuttings. Like, damn. Okay, so I'm really in love with that store. I think she really, you can tell she puts a lot of care into these plants. They're not just like cuttings stuck in the dirt like some of the other um, plants I have purchased from, you know, well-regarded places that are kind of selling them before they're even rooted. No, I'm not going to tell you which ones, you gossipy queens. Actually, it's because I, I don't really remember. I just know what's happened. <laughs> I think we all know I'd tell you. Speaking of, I was thinking about placing an order with Josh's frogs again to see if they still suck. Would you guys be interested in that kind of an experiment? <laughs> Although now that I've told you guys, maybe somebody will tell them. I don't know. I don't think I'm that important. So I think I'm going to tackle my little houseplant spa project where I clean and wash everything. And now keep in mind, I have over a hundred plants. I actually don't really know how many right now. I think I'm in like the 150s. I did lose a lot. I was up to about 200 at one point. And you know, I, I gave a bunch away. I think I composted some that were just not recovering or doing well. Um, plants that, you know, kept getting infested, I would just get rid of them. Like I had a beautiful Calathea white fusion for a long time and I had it under glass and I don't know what happened. I think a thrip must have ridden in on like the tip of my watering can <laughs> because I came back later and that plant was completely engulfed in thrips. I mean, it was, it was, it was a bloodbath. It was crazy. So I just, I got rid of it because, you know, that plant was drama enough and it's just not worth it at a certain point. It's just like, you know, am, am I am I running a botanical garden here? I don't need to have every kind of plant that is available to me on display. Um, you know, I always like imagine people are gonna come and look at my plants and like, let's be real, most people don't care. Oh, we've got this beauty in here. And again, I really did not mess with the root ball or anything because it wasn't root bound and I don't want to disturb it. I just kind of enclosed the old soil with new soil. I'll probably give these guys a nice light water with like a little dilute fish emulsion just to give them a little happy drink. So now she is all set. I love how that looks with the color of the pot and like the green, just that beautiful deep green. Oh my goodness. So there we go. I got both of these repotted. They look gorgeous and these will forever be a really nice, well, 
if I don't kill them. <laughs> well, these will at least for a while, and this pot, you know, as long as I don't break it, will always be a nice uh, reminder of getting to meet my friend Pamela in, in meat space instead of online. Um, so thanks again for doing that with me, Pamela. I kind of gave her last minute, just like, hey, you around this weekend? And she, uh, she, did, she arranged her Saturday to hang out with me. So I thought that was really sweet and I'm so glad. Um, so yeah, there we go. So we, we did a repot, guys. Oh my God, it feels good. It feels good to be back. It feels good to be sitting on the floor and talking to you like old times. So uh, I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. I got quite a bit of stuff coming at you. It's Gemini season. We are in the zone. I am feeling it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, bye.